Okay, <coughs> hello again. Uh, so today we have like a, we, we will build this page together. Have, did anyone start to build this one? Because that was like a home work from the previous lesson. Anyone? No, no, any chance? No, no. okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah, today we'll try to build this page and we will use like, uh, uh, flexbox we will use uh, CSS grid so we can try to implement everything we learned before and uh, yeah hopefully by the end of this lesson we will build the whole page hopefully uh, yeah tell me please do we have anyone here who is who booked their seats for JavaScript course okay <laughs> Okay, <laughs> yeah, so uh, next week we will be there, uh, you know, where is the Google campus, the, the Google for startups. So yeah, because uh, sorry for everyone else, because we don't have any tickets for this court, but hopefully the next court will be after New Year. So yeah, yeah. We also starting this course from the scratch next week near Monument. So we started in the lesson zero there. If somebody wants to repeat and yeah, please welcome. Uh, okay, yeah, so let, let's do that together today. And we will use, uh, today I'll sh basically use Emmet. I will use Emmet for HTML structure. We probably, we, we might want to create uh, wireframes for, for this one so you'll understand like the proper workflow from the very beginning to the uh, actual build, and you'll learn how to how to do that. Okay. Do you have any questions before we start? No. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you have our Git files on your machines, right? Yeah. So uh, we have, if you go to lesson six, in there, in that folder, you can find folder ECPDP page. And there in the images, we have a folder design. And there we start from desktop one, from desktop version, hello. So I'll open my in Photoshop and yeah, we will try to build, uh, we will f frame everything before we start writing our HTML and you will see how useful it is to have uh, wireframes before you start writing your Emmet strings and use Emmet. So what do we remember from wireframes? How do we want to frame, let's start from navigation. How do we want to frame it? The, this one. Let, let's start to frame that together. Yeah, the, f starting from this one. So the main container will be with, yeah, that's fine. So we have blue container. How do we want to group our elements? Sorry? Okay, yeah, let's do that. So here one, right? We want to change color because we want to make it visible. Second and third one, sorry. Third one. Yep. Yeah. This is it for now, right? Next up is that pink one. Uh, not sorry, violet one. So again, we want to have a top container. Because this is a sibling, we want to use the same color, right? The blue one. And 
here we have just a list, I believe that. So I will select all of them as well together and change to yellow. Sorry. Yep. Next up is this one. So here I will create my container for all of them. Mm, blue one. Next, what do we want? How do we want to group them? Like three? Uh, in in what way? Okay, do we want, maybe not, but do we want to move this section all together separately? Not the, this section or this one, but together on some point. Yeah, so because th this is what I'm trying to say that maybe we want to group left side and right side and here we will have two more columns right so if i wrap this section into yellow the sibling will be this guy and here inside i want to have two columns First column, let's change it to, I don't know, some light color, maybe green. And one more. And, yep. I'm not sure how, it probably not the very visible. Uh, what if we change? to three pixels. So I want to select, give me a second, my rectangle. Yeah, this one. Uh, uh, yeah. Three and potentially this one I also want to have three pixels I just try to make it more visible for you yep this one three more uh, yeah, let, let's stop with this one. So uh, we have two columns there, and now we want to group these guys. So again, here, this is probably like H2 or H3 something. Probably something like that. Maybe H4, because it's not a... Meh, we'll see. But So this is a block element, right? So we don't need to wrap it separately, because it is already a block element. So it takes the full weight. Same, that one probably H5, 6, something like that as well. You don't care about wrapping this one. But you might want to group them into separate uh, section. Have a, like a header, details header, right? So what I want to do here is to group them both into green one. Next group might be like a properties or whatever for this, uh, for your um, jacket, for your product. Or a short sleeve. So this one is a block element, so you don't need to wrap it. And maybe you want to, ha to have here 
section and for your button because your button is inline element. So you wrap in your button because it is inline element. So you need to have a block for it. And here you have three lists that you want to show or hide. So uh, yeah, let we just group them as well. And each of them are block elements. So you just don't need to wrap separately. Next section, pretty easy. Because we have only three, three cards here. So this one, again, this element is a block element. But here, we change in direction of flow, right? So that was vertical. Now it is horizontal. So we want to wrap them. So we're wrapping our three cards. Select yellow. Inside, we're wrapping our one card. And we just presume that we will do the same for another. Here, because we have an image, so we have an extra wrapper. Maybe white. And theoretically, we probably don't want to have, we, we just have wrapper for our called CTA call to action, our button again, because it's inline element. And these two elements, they are block elements by default. So you don't want to wrap them. Scroll down. Okay. So here, again, we're wrapping Select our blue color and I'm just thinking about how to, yeah, just this is a block element, this is inline element. So nothing scary. You might want to co combine them. Uh, sorry, yep. Because we want to position them together move around this section together. We're wrapping them into one container. So that's supposed to be yellow. And this one will be green. Next section is... So here, basically every single element is block element. So just text, text, and inline uh, this one input is inline element. So we potentially want to wrap it as well into something. And this one's supposed to be blue. Here, how do you want to wrap and group these elements? Like visually, you can split them in two sections here. Like straight away. This one and these guys, right? Visually, it looks like they are separate from each other. So I'm um, selecting this one, the whole container. Next, I'm selecting potentially this group. Because uh, theoretically, this text might be longer, this tiny text. So it might go up to there. So we're just grouping these two elements. And that means that we want to a container for these guys first. So yellow, and here we're creating our green containers. And this one is also green. For these, the they are probably just ULs, UL, 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 and UL. So we just create, select one. You just visually will see that we have them. So this is it. This is the whole wireframe for the for this page. And now we can uh, write our MS strings to create layout for that page. So let's start from the top. 
we can get rid of our dummy text so we have a navigation which tag do we want to use for navigation navigation semantic tag now we want to use now so we have navigation inside our navigation we have three groups right so potentially we have div with which is logo wrapper wrapper and there i have an image right plus i have some ul which is now list potentially right and there i have allies for allies so with class now list item multiply four and theoretically i might want to have some item dollar sign what dollar sign does yeah yeah so it will based on your multiplier you'll generate dynamic number so one two three four okay and the third sibling is one more list so actually we forgot we just forgot that we have anchors inside because you want to make it clickable right so we want to have a lie with class inside I want to have an anchor and with some text because we want to make our navigation clickable and multiply the whole ally four times next up is one more ul which is now list extra maybe there we have allies with now list extra item and there we have anchor and there we have image and multiply three yeah so this is our navigation because i have my wireframe i can see what i need and i can wrap uh, write my uh, string emmet string here with clear understanding what structure of my uh, HTML should be. So now if I click my tab, we have our navigation. Yeah. So let's add our logo. Is it this one? Yeah. And logo for images we have let me just create a formatting because we don't like my mess so for now we just use hashes for dummy urls images and we have search We have, is it back? No, user, user, and we have just back. So we can't see our images because the background is white and they are white, but they are there. Okay. Next stop is sub navigation. This one. Yeah. So let's, let's actually call it. So I will create a div with class sub now and there. I will have ul with now 
list and there I will have a line now list items item sorry and again I have anchor inside have item dollar sign multiply four 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 I think this is it we already have sub navigation uh, actually sorry my bad I multiplied the wrong thing because we had one ally so we're just doing need to multiply four allies we have not yeah so now we have four allies and in each ally we have anchor should I make it bigger no is it visible and readable okay yep next up is I don't know product details section or details probably details so let's create that might be main right because this is the main section of this page so we want to use like a semantic uh, semantic tag to emphasize that this is the main data for this page so we have main and we have details there we found that we have two columns so two siblings one is div with image section just images let's say images inside my images I have two more columns so the first column actually list right so I want to use ul for that one ul by the way, we are recording our video, uh, our lesson, so you can check on our YouTube. I believe that our quality is slightly higher because <laughs> we recorded in 4K, 60 FPS. That's supposed to be enough. Uh, yeah, so we have images. We have UL, which is images. And theoretically that might be list small list just list and there we have allies and there we have images so we want to multiply our images by three right and another section is just div with probably class images main right so this is the main image maybe we can add main image and there we have image on the next sibling so we have images yeah so now we want to style the sibling which is our details which are our details yeah so uh first element supposed to be probably h3 title plus we have price so let's say h4 with price ninety nine ninety nine plus oh yeah sorry what I missed Yep, so we want to wrap this. So that's supposed to div. Uh, we have details data. Data maybe. And there we have h3, h4, plus we have uh, one more section. Give a second. So this is oh yeah yeah sorry uh my bad 
So I lost myself a bit. So we have Maybe, yeah, maybe. So let <laughs> I lost myself in that string. <laughs> uh, so this is the whole detail section, uh, the the whole section. Here we have images, which is the section for images. Now we want to have, which is the data, right? The the yeah the right column. The whole right column with data. Yes. Yeah. 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 So now we want to have one more div, which is, let's say, header, right? Mm -hmm. And there, so let me wrap it. We have our h1 and h4. Plus <laughs> outside this div. We have one more div, yep, which is like, yeah, 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 so um, what is the class name supposed to be? Specs, yeah, specs, why not? So div specs, and there I have h5 for title, which is colors, right? Colors plus. So here we might create uh, a list or an actual checkboxes behind, and be, uh, this, yeah, checkboxes. I'll show you how to do that. So we'll create checkboxes, and the colors will be in front of them, in front of each checkbox. So when you click on the color, you actually click checkbox. Or r r even radio, not checkboxes, radio, input radios. So you have, you know the radio buttons, when you can select the male uh, or female, for example. You'll have the same here, but we'll create this after elements. Yeah to put it uh, in front and you'll see that boxes but wh eventually when you click on this one you'll click on radio so yeah let's do that so this this one is basically form right so we have form colors inside it we have two radios, right? Two inputs. Input is a type radio and multiply two, for example. Plus, we have one more H5, which is size, plus we have a select, right? So I want to have a select. With, yeah, basically select. Uh, select with options. Option multiply, I know, four, for example. Option, sorry, not options, option. Okay, so form inside my form, yes, looks looks okay. So we have inputs inside my form. Uh, give a second, maybe not, maybe something like that. So we want to have one form to collect all the yeah. So normally, if you don't have data, you, you mean if you have some data from the server, but you haven't got it yet. Yeah. 
you don't have options. So you have the option, and when you click, it's empty. Yeah. Because when you load, you p p uh, pass the data, and that will generate your options. Because uh, normally, you gener with JavaScript, you're generating your options. You, you get an array of options, and you just iterate through the array and just generate options based on that. So, OK. Next stop is, so after our form, we have some P, which is random, t random text. Plus, we have a div, which is CTA, right? Call to action, our button. And actually, I need to wrap it as well. Inside, I probably have. Yeah, that might be actually a part of form to submit a form. Yeah, why not? Let's do that. So then that means that we're removing our parentheses because we still want to be inside the form. We've added in our p tag, and then we've added in our CTA and input type, or maybe just button. Button type submit. Okay, and the last one. So here we finally close our form, right? <laughs> Because we will have some more details. We will have s uh, probably D with like more details. Yep. And inside we'll have UL. We'll have UL. Yes. Features. Features. And there. Ooh, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I want to use Emmet, but we will change classes. So let's actually remove this one. We have a lay, multiply, let's say four, sorry, four, and I want to multiply my ULs by three. Yeah, because we have three here. Okay, I think we've done. We've missed something. <laughs> that might be painful. <laughs> okay. We have what we missed. Multiplying this, we multiply that's fine. This bit is fine. Yeah. So now we have one more section which is okay. Here we have p tag. Here we have options. Oh right, this guy. Because that's su supposed to be a sibling. And so we have options inside. H5. Two inputs. I think this is it. Hopefully. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Doesn't help. Give me a second. So let's start from the end again. So if you get rid of, for example, this bit, will that work? No. It's not a problem in that stuff. I believe the problem is here. Yeah, uh, almost. Oh, yeah. I think one more thing that we found is to open this one. That was specs. Yeah, so we want to close it. But still no. Okay. If we imagine that, yeah, that is working. Awesome. 
Sometimes, when it is too long, <laughs> when your stream is too long, that might be painful. But, okay. So we have section, let's actually go here. It is working, awesome. We have this one. Div header. Still working. So is it? So we have UL. Let's get rid of the. Sorry, what was that? Oh, wait. Give me a second, please. So, if you get rid of CTA. This guy. Yeah, does it work? Good sign, we are closer. We can get rid of the whole select. Okay, so the problem inside the select. And we have select. We have. What is the problem in select? Yeah, the problem is in select. Why it is complaining? So if I get rid of my select... <laughs> still no? Okay, if I get rid of like that... It is working. So why why does it like B? Give me a second. Anyone? I can share my stream with you so we can find the problem. I think we have two mistakes. Option. So if I get rid of that, that is working. Okay. If I get rid of Give me a second. If I get rid of no, so why is complaining?
Okay, if I get rid of this bit, we can create everything. Here, sizes. If I create it separately, yeah, it doesn't work. Why select doesn't work? Ooh. It is working, so it doesn't. Is it because it doesn't like CTA button type? Ooh, it doesn't like my button. So if you go here and get a read get rid of my button type and remove I still need this one. Okay. Anyway, if we go here, and this, and this, uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, which this one S specs. Let's do where which which one? Uh, after yeah, after nine, yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. I think. One more, right? So this one Nah <laughs> So we have it's actually a good exercise for debugging <laughs> So we have uh Dave colors So if you get rid of these guys, we have everything besides. Ha! <laughs> Look at this. If we uh, run them separately, they are work. They are working. So now it doesn't work. Yeah. But that might be actually a bug of Emmet. But if I uh, go to my select, cut this, right? Create my layout, go to the place where it's supposed to be, just paste, tap. It is working. That might be a bug of Emmet, actually. <laughs> it might not handle the, that long stream. <laughs> okay, good to know. And here we have button. I believe this is add to add back. Add to back. Uh, type uh, submit. Okay, yep. So I think that we have everything for this section. We have some selects. We have back, we have radius. Uh, yeah, this is all we need for now. Next section should be much easier. <laughs> uh, so 
I will create a div with give a second class probably cross cell because you may also like so it's like cross cell cross cell there we have h2 which is title plus we have uh, ul inside my ul we have a lice inside each uh, which is product so ul is product list product list item sorry inside we have so let me just select this guy inside we have image wrapper so div uh, image and there we have image plus we have some p tag plus we have some h5 maybe h, h, h6 h5 plus we have plus we have a t for cta and there we have anchor right and all of that we want to multiply by three for now <laughs> we are lucky so yeah we have three cards yeah and next section is even easier so you might think that how to create that effect uh very easy so you want to do uh is to have z indexes so that's supposed to be behind and here you can actually create shapes you can have yeah i'll, I'll show you in a second we'll get to that point uh, here we have some what is the section about limited edition limited there we might for now i will just put text and we will solve our images later so here we have uh, p tag plus we have cta div cta and we have anchor this is a quick one next heart is first heart. so div heart there we want to have h3 h2 sorry plus we have some p plus we have email so this is input so we have div for input and email subs or subscribe Cry, subscribe there we have input with type email yeah and the footer so here we have footer inside my footer we have one container that might be tricky plus p so in my container i have footer navigation i don't know footer now and there i have two more divs one div is i know h3 with so h3 with image inside plus we have ul right socials and there we have allies multiple with anchors with images and we want to multiply by four multiply by four okay i think we finished with this one and this one div uh, so that's supposed to be that's supposed to be wait a sec footer footer navigation we we want to wrap this these guys i missed my div so div is 
how do we how do we want to call this section? Socials. So we have socials. Yeah, so maybe social container. Container. And there we have all of that. And here we have div with details, store details, store something. And there we have UL. Let's say for now UL li multi with anchors multiply by four and multiply by four again. That's supposed to be, yeah. Yahoo! So we finished with all HTML for this page. You have the whole page. Now we just style it and you can see that page. <laughs> Few more lines of CSS, right? Uh, yeah, so that was besides our MS3 and that was quick. Let's actually start styling our stuff. So here we have image index. We don't want to have this stuff. We have, yeah. So let's start from the beginning. Right. So navigation. So now, for now, we want to have a background which is black, right? And the hex color for black. Zero, zero, zero. And we want to have a min height with 100 pixels. And yeah, let, let's take, stick with 100 pixels. Here inside, we have three elements, right? So first of all, I want to have some padding left and right. So padding. Let's start set to one M and top and bottom is maybe half M. Then we have display. We can use flex for that. Yeah. Any other suggestions? Justify content space between. Okay, so we have padding, we have, and we also want to align items vertically. So I use center, right? And yes, now we go to each list inside. So that's supposed to be display flex as well to put them in a row, this list. Because now it, it is a column now. Yeah. So list style because it is UL. So none to remove our dots. Padding zero because we have by default we have padding and margin zero as well. Pretty much the same we want to have for now list extra. If you refresh the page, we have a navigation. Not that nice as we expecting, but we will fix it in a second. So for our image, we have, so yeah, logo is fine. And uh, now we want to uh, style our navigation, first navigation list. So here we have our allies. And the same, because I want to change stylings for our anchors first, because it is hard to read. 
yeah, dark. So, uh, how to remove underlines? Text decoration. Yes. So, text decoration, none, and color, uh, yeah, which is FFF. So, uh, why we can't s s uh, define color here for a lie? Remember that basically we can, our elements can inherit stylings, right? So, let's say if I put some text, some text, into a lie directly, right? And set text color to the whole list to the UL to white. Sorry, I haven't saved. We have some text inheriting my white color, but anchors don't. So keep that in mind that when you working with anchors, you need to specify stylings di directly to them. Because uh, um, they have their... Kind of, yeah, they have like a, their own priority for stylings. Yes. Yeah. I mean... Uh, so what I'm saying that uh, here this white comes from the whole, from UL, right? Because I've styled UL, not a lie. And it is inheriting here, but anchors doesn't. So when you're working with anchors, you need to understand that you need to specify your color directly in the anchor. Yes, so even if you have, you can specify for the whole list. Yeah, but if you have anchor, you need to specify directly. Give me a second. Yes, we have four elements and they are clickable. Let's create some padding for them. Uh, one M, maybe one and a half M. And actually, let's change font size for them. Like one, three M. So as you might guess, our padding will increase as well because it will be based on these values, this value. So actually it's still too small. So let me just be two M's. Too big, 1.6. Meh, better. And we want to have capital text, all in capitals. So we can go to our navigation here and change all text to capitals. But how to do that with CSS? Capitalize will change the first letter, uppercase. Uh, so yeah, how to define it? Uppercase is the right value, but what is a property? Transform. <laughs> and yeah, uppercase. So text transform. You want to transform your text. We have them. Yep. Okay, the, the only thing that I want to add to my website, to that page, is font, uh, font, yeah, font, basically. I will use Roboto. So Google fonts, I quickly add it to my page. Roboto, I need three sizes. Uh, customize, I'll use light and potentially bold. Copy that, oh, too much. Copy that URL. Go to my HTML head and add it here. So now 
we still don't have it because I need to define it here. So font family is robo bodo and sans serif as a fallback. If you don't have a roboto, that will fall back to sans serif. Yep. Okay. We have something. So now I want to add that uh, underline for active. Yeah. This one. This line. And I might also want to have like a hover state to have the same uh, thing but for each when I hover on them. So I'll see that I'm interacting with, this, with our anchors. So let's do that. Ba, 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 ba. Let me actually, uh, for, our back, uh, for our anchors, it's very easy when you use dummy colors, background colors, it's very easy to understand where you, your elements uh, is starting and where it is ending. So I use like background color some purple beautiful Woo. so <laughs> yeah these guys they are from the next line yeah so uh but this one so actually as you can see the problem now because we used the same class here now list Oh, wait a sec. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is here. But why it, why it is white? Any ideas? Why the color is white? What? Subnavigation now list. We definitely reuse this. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, as you can see, <laughs> we've targeting two lists. To be more specific, how I can fix it? No. Uh, yeah, we can, but we can add the this one now, right? Uh, sorry, now. Yeah. Yeah, so now I can specify that and select only these guys that are inside my navigation. Yeah, that is why uh, I believe that on some points we will add uh, SCSS SAS to our course because uh, with SAS you will never had uh, you will never have such problem because you are scoping your nesting elements. So you'll never get outside the parent. But yeah, this is a topic for another lesson. Okay, yeah, beautiful. So uh, here we understand where we, if I hover to my elements, ooh, we have a problem. Why the width is going outside? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. It would be nice to clean up after us, right? Beautiful. Yeah. And still, uh, as you can see that this, the element, the anchor is bigger than a lie. So it, it, it gets outside the ally which is, shouldn't be a case. So for our anchors, we want to set them to display block. And now our allies taking the uh, anchor height and width and based on that build its own height. Remember about inline elements, they don't have, so basically their height based on content height and this is what our ally just understood that. Okay, this is inline element. The content height is that, so I supposed to be the same. 
So if you go back to anchor, display block. Ooh. Display block. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now I want to have this nice underline below. So we want to we probably want to reduce padding top and bottom, right? It, it is too much. So we might use like. F M Meh better point seven. So uh um hmm. I'm just thinking because we want to align the dead line, right? So maybe we want to replace this one with zero, but we want to add Top and bottom, left and right. Yeah. So now we can have our after element positioned here for the anchor. Yeah. So let's do that. So here we have our anchor And create after element, pseudo element, right? How to create pseudo element? The first thing that you want to have in pseudo element. Yes. So you want to define content, which is empty string. Yeah. Uh, next up is display block. Next up, we want to define height to four pixels, maybe. And background color, we want to have white. And position absolute root bottom zero, left zero, right? they are oh <laughs> as you can see here I can change the color uh, give me a second Oh yeah, I haven't specified widths. So uh, height and widths, let's say 40%, but it's still there. Why? Lesson three, I believe. So I use position absolute. Some and where <laughs> for the parent. So here, yeah. So I can get rid of my purple. Yeah, so the width now based on this one. Yeah. Uh, do we want to decrease? Let, let, let's go to the design. Yeah, maybe decrease. Maybe 30%. Yeah, but not for all of them. We want to have for the hover state or for active one. So active is pretty simple. You add active class, have it before. So let's do that for first one. So here, I want to add class active. This is how you normally do. So the active one has class active. And now, we will have only one element, right? Only the first one. 
Now we have copied this stuff and replace active to hover. Yeah? So when I hover on my anchor, I will create after. By just appearing straight away, immediately. But we want to have some animation. We might want to have that transition like from zero to that 30%. So what we can do, we can actually get rid of our hover, apply for everyone. So now we have again for everyone. Now for these guys, transform, translate, minus 100%. horizontally, right? And zero vertically. So all of them now shifted to full width of itself. As you can see that uh, we still need to keep the order. That means that we want to move this one above because we're redefining our active. So we want to play with these numbers above. Yeah, because active is supposed to be on the same position where it is. Now, next step for our anchor, we're, sorry, for our anchor, we're setting overflow hidden. So we can't see them. Yeah. And now we want to create this transition. So I'm um, get rid of all of that. Setting hover. Translate supposed to be zero. Yeah, I'm putting it back. So when I hover, I'm resetting my transform to zero and put to initial state. So if I hover, it is still appear straight away. But what I want to do to have it to have an animation to the default state to the anchor after uh, sorry to the yeah to the anchor after I'm setting transition transition to 0.3 seconds. So now if I hover, yeah, we have nice and smooth animation. Questions? I see confused faces. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, uh, you still can't target the sibling. So when you click, you'll remove class active from this one, add class active to this one. Yeah. 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 I still see that see that tiny bug. Ooh. So of course that might be a hack where you want to use like minus hundred ten percent, but it is a hack. Is that the still pixels that are showing in the other Yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> so you're just moving slightly further. So yeah, we have a nice animation. Now we want to align our header. 
header uh, our extra items. So here we have extra items. So now, yeah, extra item. And for we want to set again height width for each. So see that again, anchors, even if they are parent, they have height 16 pixels. It takes from somewhere. So you need to convert them into block elements so they can inherit the height of the image. Block. So now the height is correct. A default. Oh, uh, I don't know where it takes from, but yeah, if I turn off my block, it has some auto. Auto. Yeah. And for some reason, it is 16 pixels. So yeah, we have the proper height. Now you want to have the spacing between. So potentially we want to have some margin at zero and let's say one M. Yeah. Maybe less. Maybe actually to be like very precise, we want to have margins on right on the right and remove margin from the la last one. So margin right 1m and for this one last child margin 0. Yeah. We can close this one. We want to decrease the size of our images. And we want to have width, let's say 30 pixels. <laughs> That's funny. All right. It has with 30 pixels, but because the shape are, is different, we have this issue, right? So what we want to do actually for in each of our uh, ally, we want to align vertically or use this one for whole UL. So if it display flex, we might want to have like align items center and still have the problem with this one any ideas oh right that is why not center but baseline Meh, not, not. Uh, any ideas how to fix it? Margin. Oh, no, no, so uh, <laughs> that will not. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> So uh, yeah, we want to align vertically and maybe because this element is the tallest one, we might want to, because we have that kind of shape, we might want to specify height. So now all of them are equal, but still the weight of elements feels different, right? Yeah. So uh, you when you change in the, you, when you setting only height or only widths, 
that will keep the ratio so it will not, not squeeze but if you change uh, set height and width then it will might distort the, the whole image so um, still it looks meh sorry <laughs> it is a dodgy one <laughs> but yeah so uh maybe 35 Eh, still not 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 awful, I would say. So margin one point half. And actually, I want to change for my navigation. Left and right supposed to be two amps. Sorry. Mm, yeah, but that that looks fine already, I would say. And actually, we can add. One more effect for this one. So here, for my image, hover. I want to say that transform, transform, scale, one point two for twenty percent, and. Transition, transition is three seconds. So scale works nice with images uh, because it's just images. So it is scaling nicely if I zoom in. So it looks okay. But if you scale text, you might see that like jump a little bit of jump and distortion of your text so be careful when you use scale because uh, it tries to calculate by pixels but with your text it will have some fraction and it will start because it can't fit into half of the lamp of the pixel it, it still needs to round it this number to some point and some engines has problems with that some engines have problems so yeah, look at us, we finished our navigation. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the next section is, next section, let me close my navigation, sub now. No, sub navigation. So background color, I want to have some, some nice color. Uh, where's our color picker? Color picker. Copy. So for us, it is 7B3B8F. And here, Again, we have sub now, li, a, yeah, no, probably not. What is the structure? UL, now list. We have now list and we have now list item. Cancel. And we want to have a color set to white. And for our list, we want to specify list style to none, padding zero, margin zero, display flex. Yep. Yeah, right. For our anchors, we also want to have text decoration none the only thing that we forgot with us uh, with you is to set max width for the all containers so normally when you develop in your website you're setting uh, max width for all your content so uh, it 
like people use a few different numbers but very popular is 200 uh, pixels and 1600 pixels uh, sorry 1200 pixels and 1600 pixels so i will use 1600 pixels so if i go to my navigation here i just use uh max no where's the right we probably need a wrapper to implement that yeah to implement that you need to you want to have extra wrapper for each section so if you have this one for example for example sorry let me just close this so we have a navigation you just create just a div with class container very generic class and paste everything there and now for your container you have a generic uh, stylings where you're defining so widths 1690% uh, right so it should be responsive 90% margin zero from the top and auto from the left and right so you'll have 5% on the left, 5% on the right. But also you set in max widths where you have 1600 pixels. So if, it, if you have a huge screen, you'll fit it into the center and I'll just show you in a second. Beautiful. And this is a problem because we have this play flex and yeah basically we want to have these two properties i missed my bracket so what went from right we want to inherit height uh right We? No, we don't have. Let's do that for our. So, height inherit doesn't work because we have we didn't define height. We defined min height, but height is still auto. So that is why it can't calculate. So I will need to do for each of our lists. I need to specify the min height. Beautiful. Give me a second. So we have. It's nice when you can break everything in a second, huh? So yeah, now list. Align items. Cent center. And the same for this one. Yep. We still have the same. Okay. And if I have the screen like 4000 pixels, as you can see, our container still keeps that. 1600 pixels yeah so this is normally how you build uh, how you use and build your website you need to specify the top with the max widths for all your content because uh, it, it is not very comfortable when your user will read like this right I mean it, it is exercising but Yeah, so for next one, sorry. For the next one, we also want to have this container. Container div. And we also want to specify 
besides this container class, we want to specify our class. Like, uh, sub now container. And with this class, we can select and sub navigation. Sorry. We can have align items center and justify content center. Yep. We only need to add paddings. And we might want to add it here. Like for each element, actually, not here. Let's add it for each element separately. So, padding on M better on size 1.5 M, something like that. And as you can see, they are not matching each other. So this is because we have, first of all, we have padding in our navigation. So we don't want to have this padding here. This is the fir first problem. Next problem is the width of these uh, of elements left and right. So do we know how to fix it? Mm, yeah. <laughs> so you have uh yeah, here we have widths for the con from the container, here we have the same widths, but So actually, we have a trick for that. We can set for this list, yeah? We just set, posi let's say we need to have a, our container position relative. And for this one, we have position absolute top 50% right left 50 percent transform tra sorry transform translate minus 50 percent minus 50 percent yeah Now they are moving together. So this is a trick. How you can do that. If you have such, or you might define widths with CSS grid. You can define columns like 100 pixels, auto 100 pixels. And for this one, you will have the same 100 pixels, auto 100 pixels. And then you could just align everything. That's supposed to work as well. VCS is great. Okay, so as you can see that to build HTML, you can do that in 20 minutes, but to style, you can spend days and days and days. Uh, to, to be honest, uh, I remember when I was working as a, the, the first, my first job uh, as a developer here was about creating layouts because that was e-commerce agency. And like my, the target was to build one page per day. So every single day you need to build one page so you basically spent a day CSSing. So you're not building the logic because 
everything was uh, so we had like a CMS system so we just create layouts uh, yeah we've created a layout and yeah so CSS is roughly a day for per page this is your goal okay uh, yeah so let's move to the next section Ooh, we'll probably not move to the next section because it is eight almost eight anyway uh, I will share this code with you uh, you can complete this try to complete this at home I'm there I mean our slack and you can ask any questions we also have are you which you remember she also happy to help with uh, you with, with, with that project we'll be glad so Mario will run JavaScript courses and she are you coming to JavaScript courses beautiful yeah yeah no <laughs> unfortunately uh, so there we have a limitation of 25 seats this is like a limitation of their <laughs> right but uh, and uh, Google like very strict about that so we will uh, I will send messages to people who've booked tickets with because yeah, yeah yeah so I uh, probably I'll do that today because or tomorrow because many people basically we've released tickets months and a half ago and we were booked like in two days and uh, that means that that was a while ago and maybe a lot of people just changed something in their lives so they might just decided not to come and we can yeah we'll get some some free tickets again so yeah to yeah maybe yes yeah I'll wait you'll you'll get an email <laughs> no no but uh, we will send to everyone so you'll just see when when it, it happened when it, it happens so you yeah uh yeah it is in meta, meta group yeah maybe maybe um i mean yeah 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 okay yeah we'll do that and give me a second one more second drive do, 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 do. course study front end feedback we have a final feedback survey This is a different form than you have usually. Uh, please spend two minutes for th for that one. Uh, yeah, because we, we we need to to know what you think like about yeah. It's a bit different. Has quite a few different questions. Also, as you remember, we sent you uh, another form on the weekend about certifications and who certificates who uh yeah we got three responses <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that was on the same channel yeah. second That was uh, Sunday, 10 a.m. I mean, who who's wake up at 10 a.m. on Sunday, right? <laughs> I believe that the biggest challenge was to submit this one at 10 a.m. rather than come to all lessons. So yeah, we have Mio, yours one. 
we have mag yours sorry <laughs> you're welcome and Jan sorry <laughs> yeah thanks uh, that was challenging seven eight weeks that was fun and I will have for the next court and sorry for that but for JavaScript we will provide t-shirts we finally get t-shirts and I'm not sure because uh, I I not sure why. Yeah, actually, I can uh, I can like pass via Mario for the JavaScript course, and she can give it to you. So we, yeah, next week. So with JavaScript, we have we're starting from basics, basically, from like very basics, and we will start building separate projects. But yes, we will do some stuff uh, with e-commerce, and maybe we will make that alive by adding some carousels, etc., to that kind of pro to these projects. So yeah, maybe, maybe. We'll see. So uh, yeah, that the JavaScript course will be the first cohort. So uh, that means that we'll have a lot of kind of problems with <laughs> with content, with content arrangement, because I remember that first cohort of static front end course that was tough. Because uh, after that, after the first cohort, uh, cohort, and because of the feedback that we've collected. We refactored our c content like dramatically, and like this is basically a completely new course based on the feedback. And now I think that we might extend this course for future cohorts and add SaaS and add more time for building maybe. So we might might extend it to like ten lessons or twelve lessons. So uh, we can have more time to build such projects together. Yes, uh, yes, so thank you. Uh, yep. You said you upload the code to platform, right? I'll uh, send it to our Slack. We have a Slack group. You are the for the first time today. Yes. Okay. Slack. Yeah, so you can come to me and I'll add you to our Slack. Okay. Yeah, all videos on our YouTube. So you can, uh, colors and hoods. And uh, also, there we upload. We have a, quite a few video JavaScript videos already, so you can go through and like learn JavaScript. Start learning JavaScript. Yeah. Don't be shy to write messages. <laughs> yeah, you, easy. You can apply. Meet uh, Eventbrite technically, okay. yeah. We I think that we have three more seats. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> uh, we actually advertised the venue uh, has been confirmed like three no, no, four days ago, and we just advertised after that. So we did like a short notice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we still have some stickers here. If you need, you can grab a few, share with your friends. Thank you. And hope to see you in future. <laughs>